Extrasolar planets, exoplanets. So what are some of the things we learned from there? Again, this is going to be a quick overview. Since 1995, hundreds of planets beside our own eight have been discovered lending credence to the solar nebula theory. The solar nebula theory that says that planets are formed when a star forms and the planets form around that star as a byproduct of the gas surrounding that star. So based on that theory, there should be lots of other planets going around other stars. These are called extrasolar planets. Okay. The most effective way of discovering these planets is to observe the Doppler effect or radial velocity. This is the same method, Doppler effect or radial velocity uh, method. On the motion of the star and from the amount of the Doppler shifts, we can determine the velocity of the star and the mass and, dens and the distance of the planet to the star. So a lot of times, the star's brightness is so bright that we cannot see the planet going around it. But if we do spectral analysis of the star, the star will wobble and it will come towards us and away from us. And when we analyze that Doppler motion, the Doppler effect, we can notice that there is a planet going around it. The radial velocity method, otherwise also known as the Doppler method, has been the most beneficial method to discovering planets. These are some of the planets that have been discovered using this method. 51 Pegasi B. This is, as a matter of fact, the first discovered extrasolar planet. 51 Pegasi B. This is the way that they do the, the naming of the planets. 51 Pegasi A will be the name of the star. And sometimes they don't even say A. They'll just say 51 Pegasi. The first discovered planet around that star, they'll call it 51 Pegasi B. That's the first planet. If that star has another planet, they'll call it 51 Pegasi C. Okay? So the planets begin with B, then C, then D, in order of the date of discovery. The star is the A. Okay? You see that? 51 Pegasi B. Another planet discovered by this method, 47 Ursi Majoris B. You see that? The A is the star. Tau Butis B. Upsilon Andromedae B. 55 Cancri B. Gliese 876 B. Okay. This particular planet, Upsilon Andromedae B, is very interesting because it's the first one we discovered that had more than one planet. I believe it had three planets. Okay. So if it had three planets, we would do Upsilon Andromeda B, Upsilon Andromeda C, Upsilon Andromeda D, right? If you go all the way up to D, that has three planets going around a single star. Okay? Another method is called the transit method. It's not as helpful as this method. Basically, the transit method says if the star has a planet going around it, then the planet is sometimes going to block the star. And the light of the star is going to dim. It's going to transit the planet. If the light of the star dims, it's gonna, we're going to be able to notice that. You see that? And every once in a while, the light of the star will dim, 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 dim. If we monitor that dimming effect, we can find out that there's a planet. So the planets that have been discovered using this method 55 Cancri E, notice that's a, another partner to this guy. 55 Cancri B, see here, 55 Cancri E. So that means B, C, D, E. It's the same system, you see. Uh, Gliese 436B, uh, this one would be different than this guy. This is Gliese 876, so this is 436. The other method, which is a good method, but we haven't been able to utilize this that well so far. It's better if we utilize this from uh, outer space. This is called astrometry. This one, what we do is we observe the wobble of the star. The star wobbles like this, and we monitor its motion as the star is wobbling and the, as the planet is going around it. Our instruments are not very sophisticated yet to be able to observe this from Earth. So it's better, uh, as our instruments get better, we can use, utilize this method 
from outer space. Okay, so in the future, we'll probably be able to utilize this more effectively. So I gave you some of the main ones. There are other methods for discovering the extrasolar planets, but I'm doing the, the major ones. Uh, these are some of the planets that have been discovered. HD 834 and so on, Tau Bootis, 51 Pegasi, Upsilon Andromeda. Or remember I told you it has three planets, Upsilon Andromeda. This is the planet and this is its host star. Look how close that is. The second planet that it has, 1.9 mass of Jupiter. And look how far it is away from it. You see here, this is 1 AU. That's how to read this kind of a graph. That planet is about 1 AU from its host star. This planet is almost touching its host star, very close to it. This planet is 4.2 mass of Jupiter, and it's about 2.5 AUs from its host star. You see? Then this one, very close, very close, very close, very close. This guy has two planets. This one, one, this one, one. This guy has one. Uh, this one has a planet way out over here, po uh, point, point 0.87 mass of Jupiter. A lot of the ones we've discovered are heavier than Jupiter. Two, six, five, two, five, two, you know. They're either very heavy or they're close to their star. Why? Because our methods are not very refined in order to discover planets that are light. See, we could discover planets that are heavy because those heavy planets affect their stars very, very good. But if the planet is light, it's not going to affect its star very much. So as our instruments get better and better, we can start discovering planets that are more Earth-like. You see? And uh, you, you hear it in the news all the time. We're starting to get better at it, and we're going to discover uh, planets that are more like Earth, and then hopefully one day we could discover life on those, which is our goal.